but why leave Memphis to go to a record deal when you can have your make your own record deal, start your own company and stay there and do it yourself. Before Juicy J founded the 3 Six Mafia with DJ Paul, started his own label, and beat Scorsese to an Oscar in 2006. Fall up in the club and we start wild. Before Juicy J enjoyed a cult rap following for decades, then broke into white America with a little help from Miley Cyrus and Katy Perry. Juicy J, she wants that dark horse Juicy J. Let's talk about it, cause if she does, sign he says me it up. Every day, sign every me day. Up. Before Juicy had a 2008 Rolls Royce Phantom and a 2011 Ghost in his garage, before he offered up fifty thousand dollars in a twerking scholarship, which he could afford because his net worth is an estimated twenty million. Trippy. Before Trippy and Wiz Khalifa released a video for Bossed Up that would put the Google and Apple offices to shame. Started in the gutter, now I'm bossed up. When Juicy J was a teen, he did his research on the music industry and learned that producers made more money than performers. Despite wanting to stay behind the scenes, he kept finding himself front and center after his music partners were thrown in jail or just weren't hungry enough. As Faye would have it, his turn as front and center would last for decades, making him one of today's most relevant veterans of rap. What's going on guys, my name is Michael McCrudden, documenting the life of Juicy J prior to fame, here for you on Before They're Famous. We've also covered Wiz Khalifa and a ton of his collaborators, so be sure to check those videos out. In the meantime, let us know in the comments down below who you want me to document next. Also, what do you guys think about the new background? Don't you like it? Juicy J was born Jordan Michael Houston in North Memphis, Tennessee on April 5, 1975. His father was a preacher and his mother worked in a library. He has two sisters, but it was older brother Pat aka the rapper Project Pat who he was closest with. Jordan fell in love with music early on and wanted to be a drummer so bad. As a kid, he would play on empty oatmeal cartons. He also enjoyed singing and would do small performances for his family and friends. Taking the lead from his big bro, Jordan started to rap when he was only 13. Albums by Curtis Blow and Sugar Hill Gang were some of his first bangers he listened to, and it wasn't long before he was beatboxing and writing songs in class. Jay was determined to have a career in music but knew from an early age that it wouldn't be an easy one. To get a better idea of what it would take, he asked his mom to take out any books about the music business she could find at the library. When she brought them home, Jordan read through every one of them and quickly learned that the money was in producing. Hey Matt, you're the producer of this show, how are you doing? Pretty good! Yeah, it's true. He had already earned the nickname Juice Man and started DJing as Juicy J. At 17, he formed a short lived rap group with a friend where he'd scratch while the other stood front and center. Unfortunately, his bandmate was in jail so often that it never really worked out, and Juicy reluctantly took on the role of frontman as well as producer. Hey, Mike, how you doing? <sighs> I'm sweating buckets, bro. Still with me. He got off into making beats and he just came up. You know, he had a drive, he had a dream. While trying to get his music career off the ground, Jay worked at two grocery stores. When he had saved up enough money, he bought a four track recorder off of one of his teachers and got to work on his ragtag studio. By the time he had finished high school, Juicy J was already generating some buzz in his neighborhood as a producer. Over on the south side of town, DJ Paul and Lord Infamous were doing the same and the three teamed up to form the Backyard Posse. Eventually they became Triple Six Mafia and sent invites to a bunch of local rappers to come lay down words on their tracks. They recorded what they made onto tapes and started selling them out of the trucks of their cars. In 1995, the collective became known as 3 Six Mafia and welcomed Koopsta Nika, Gangsta Boo, and Crunchy Black to the gang. They released their debut album, Mystic Styles, which became an underground classic. Man. Now, y'all ain't stopping there. Y'all got a movie now. Yeah, we're working on it right now. Right? What's it called? What's, what's it about? The rap group now had a full fledged cult following and were making waves in the industry. And all those books Juicy J read years earlier, well, they finally came in handy when the boys ended up signing a huge contract with Relativity Records, and they began their own imprint label, Hypnotized Minds. From there, they were able to sign a few local artists themselves, one of whom just happened to be Juicy's favorite older brother, rapper Project Pat. Memphis helped us to get where we are. By the time the year 2000 rolled around, their hustle had paid off, as they reached new commercial success with the album When the Smoke Clears. As for the rest of the story, well you know the story because this is Before They're Famous. My name is Michael McCredden, we make all sorts of crazy videos on this channel, you should check out some other ones here, and let us know in the comments down below who you want to see the next Before They're Famous on. Or maybe it'll be an After They're Famous or Before They're Gone. 
or after they were gone. We do that as well. We do a lot. See you guys in another video. Do you believe in magic? Ba da ba da ba da ba. Ba 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 da ba da ba da ba da ba 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 do. Okay. <clears throat>